I have known many gods. He who denies them is as blind as he who trusts them too deeply. I seek not beyond death. It may be the blackness averred by the Nemedian skeptics, or Krom's realm of ice and cloud, or the snowy plains and vaulted halls of the Nordheimer's Valhalla. I know not, nor do I care. Let me live while I live. Let me know the rich juices of red meat and stinging wine on my palate, the hot embrace of white arms, the mad exultation of battle when the blue blades flame and crimson and I am content. Let teachers and philosophers brood over questions of reality and illusion. I know this. If life is illusion, then I am no less than an illusion, and being thus, the illusion is real to me. I live, I burn with life, I love, I slay, and I am content. This is from Robert E. Howard and Egsberg de Camp's Queen of the Black Coast. It is a quote said by the main man himself, Conan the Barbarian. And today, I'd like to take a deep dive into his war life. Now, before I go too deep into him, of course, and hit Conan the Philosopher, if you will, uh, I just want to remind you guys that uh, a lot of you guys who are viewing my videos are still not subscribed. It really helps the channel out if you would go ahead and click that subscribe icon. It helps out me. It would help out your favorite YouTuber as well. I know it's a little bit of a pain to create account, but it's worth it. Guys, thank you so much. With that obligatory ritual out of the way, let's move forward. So, as we can see from this quote, Robert Howard actually had a lot to say about the, the noble savage, if you will. Now, to understand this, we have to dig a little deeper into Robert Howard's life and universe and everything else. See, he grew up at the time when the oil boom was just hitting Texas. There was a lot of rough men, and he would see them routinely. People would get shot over minor disagreements. There would be fights. There would be all kinds of terrible displays of humanity. But he would also see nobility in the savage. And that's actually what led him to create this character of Conan. A wise man, um, you know, probably wise well beyond his years, but lacking the knowledge to articulate it properly. Um, he, at times, is a sailor, a thief, a warrior, basically whatever is needed for him to survive and to achieve whatever goal he set out for himself. Which, when you think about it, could be a good basis for a life in general. I mean, consider the people he was dealing with at the time. They were probably at one time blacksmiths and now were metalworking to build oil derricks. They were probably farmhands that had to become roughnecks to, to actually get the oil out of the ground, right? And he would see the pomp and circumstance of rich men who would use these people to their ends to achieve their goal of getting rich. And when we consider that this is his life experience before writing Conan, we start to understand a lot about the world that he created. And to be perfectly honest, I think each and every Conan story does deserve its own video and me breaking it down piece by piece. But I feel like that would be a video series in and of itself. Now, if you guys would like me to do that, leave a comment and I'll get to it. Okay? But I'm going to start with this in the general philosophy of Conan. Okay? One does not need to be a deeply articulate person to be introspective enough to understand the world around him. You don't necessarily have to be able to use words the way I do to be able to understand the world around you, right? Um, I wouldn't want to call somebody else a noble savage without their permission, of course. But 
it's okay to be a noble savage. It's okay to get angry, to need to argue, to fight with one's words and one's positive deeds for what needs to be done. I don't, of course, condone violence. I never will on this channel. But the idea is still there. The idea is we can fight for what we believe in. And we can think deeply about what we believe in and why we believe in it. And then have our sources checked, right? Um, in the first Conan movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, they talk about the riddle of steel. And I'm going to pose an idea to you that one needs steel to sharpen steel, right? One needs strong people around them of strong conviction and to speak of such things with them in a manner that is sparking debate, not that is causing arguments and fights, but simply to sit down and say, hey, this is my feeling on whatever topic. I'd like to hear yours, and I'd like to discuss them, and I'd like to ask questions, if you have time. And then go through them with them, and ask those questions, and get those answers, right? Um, I'll be honest. When it comes to certain debates, I'm pretty much on the fence about them. I f can see the merits of both sides, and that I understand it's a complicated issue that one solution may not be acceptable to everyone. So I ask the questions. I try to understand their position. I try to challenge their position, you know, in a respectful manner. So that we all get to learn. We all get to understand. We all get to grow. Because, I mean, look, that's what we're all here to do, right? Is grow. Is to become more than what we are. So let's do that. Let's be the steel that helps other steel sharpen. Okay? Let's do that for each other. The next piece, I, I'll talk about the, the second Arnold movie as well. Um, the other piece about the, the second Arnold movie is Conan takes a job to, you know, rescue the princess, but it turns out to be not all as it seems. And he figures this out fairly quickly, that there is something up. And he plays it close to the chest, but he does spend the time to ask himself, what am I really doing here? What's going on? And he thinks about it. And, you know, he turns to the wisdom of his peers for that. We can do that too. If you're unsure of something, reach out to the people you trust and respect. Get their opinion. You don't necessarily have to take it, but you should listen to it. Okay? That's the best way I can describe it is we should listen we should be prepared to move our position right i mean look there are very few issues i would suggest getting entrenched on okay um some things you know th there is occasionally a hill you're gonna die on but for the most part be open to it and listen to the other parties around you don't necessarily have to agree you don't necessarily have to take their advice but listening to it understanding their position so that you can either better defend your position or, you know, you can at least be open to the idea of change. These are important life skills, okay? This is how you move forward as a human being. Being in ideological lockstep with one group or another is not going to move you forward as a human being, okay? But holding your opinions being able to justify your opinions if needed, right? And being able to explain why you hold those positions is absolutely vital. Absolutely. So consider that, guys. Consider what positions you hold that are sacred, right? Um, what positions are most important to you, right? I'll give you an example. To me, one of the hills that I will absolutely die on is my belief that family, now what that family looks like is irrelevant, but a stable family where everyone can rely on each other, where there's trust, where there's respect, where there's love. 
is absolutely essential to child development. Now, I'm not saying that a family has to have a specific demographic viewpoint. That, that's I'm not going to go there. What I'm going to say is a family should consist of people that care, respect, and nurture the growth of those younger members. Okay? And I would not think it appropriate for at least for me to not provide that for my child. Okay? Now, what that looks like to each individual family, hey, I leave it to you, right? Some families are very, very strict. Others are very, very, very loose. Some hold hard and fast values. Others are fairly open. What matters, though, is the environment for the younger generation to grow is there. That it is a nurturing place where the younger generation feels they can trust and respect the opinions of the older generation. And it's also important for the older generation to remember that the most important thing they can do is attempt to impart their values and then let the next generation interpret those values as they need for a modern world that does not necessarily reflect the original world that those values came from. I'll give you an absolutely textbook example, okay? Um, in my family, one of the things that everybody needs to have is a skill that they can trade for some sort of value, right? Be it, um, you know, uh, learning how to be a blacksmith so that you can make money to take care of your family, to... Uh, a skill that you can trade for food to what have you, okay? Um, I've got a few in my back pocket. Um, you know, not this one yet, but um, those skills, you know, I feel are important. But I would never say to my daughter, you know, you need to pick up smithing because it's a vital life skill, all right? In the modern world, it really isn't. But what I do say is, you need to pick up a skill that you can trade to live off of, whatever that skill may be, right? We also believe that you should carry on an art, right? Whatever that artistic expression looks like to you. To me, it's painting, believe it or not, painting miniatures. Um, it's the most calming, relaxing thing I think I'll ever do. But to my wife, it's doing quilting work or doing, you know, other types of painting. She has six million different art forms and she enjoys every one of them and she's fantastic at them, right? It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like so long as you get the value out of it. And that's what I'm trying to pass on to my daughter. Now, my daughter is learning a musical instrument right now and I think that's great. Um... I'm a reasonable technical player, but I'm not at the level that she is. She has talent at it, and she likes doing it, so, you know, let her do it, right? That's my point, is we allow the younger generation to interpret those values, okay? They're not always going to look the exact same, but it's important they have them. And I'm also passing along the idea that you don't have to be articulate to think deeply about things and come to conclusions and test those conclusions against friends, family, relatives, what have you, right? So long as you have a basic way of explaining your position and you're willing to accept the idea that you can listen to other people's explanations and take what, what good you find in them, then you've done your job. Now, for homework for tonight... I am going to encourage you guys to pick one of your positions, something that you hold dear. And I want you guys to attempt to explain it simply, plainfully, and respectfully in the comments. I would like to keep this generally, you know, PG, and I would like to remind everybody that just because somebody holds a counter opinion to yours 
does not mean it needs to be attacked. In fact, it should probably be discussed in a respectful manner. So if you can't do the discussion in a respectful manner, you can just reply to that person with, I disagree, but I respect your right to hold that position. And we'll leave it at that. All right, guys, thank you so much once again. I'm going to go ahead and close down this video. Merry meet, merry part, merry meet again. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.